Hello everyone, this is a video update on TestLogic Dash mobile instrumentation cluster used for your Tesla Model 3 and Y. At the time of this video recording, the S and the X are not supported as they have an instrumentation panel built into the vehicle. So the first thing that I put in the video description was there needs to be a way to toggle dark and light mode in this application rather than rely solely on Tesla's system to do it. And uh, they also added a settings menu. They also fixed the Google Maps. So when you're not driving, the map actually updates and it's so it's it's much better now they do that and i don't think i see too much jitter but i'm going to record the screen um, when we start driving just to swipe through some of the features and of course of how well the app continues to perform there was another issue where the odometer was stuck in basically in kilometers for some reason and it so this is actually my correct odometer on here it was in like kilometers or some kind of weird value they also had protected my VIN number, which is nice. So they added, they protected by adding the four asterisks at the end. Let's see, what else did they address? They allowed you to adjust the clock settings. So right here, I can change between 24 hour time down to 12, so AM, PM. So I just tap here. And of course, they added a little bit more information for the battery status. So right here, I can change between miles left, kilowatt hours, and of course, percentages, um, just by tapping that. Now, what's kind of weird is I can't change this from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Yes, I'm in the US. I like my Fahrenheit, um, but I use Celsius for different things such as like uh, with uh, with computers, especially when I'm doing stuff with overclocking. But I'm going to just leave it. Um, I mean, maybe they'll fix that in the next bug update. I guess there's some other stuff. I think um, there was some stuff related with uh, better notifications. There was some stuff related with energy right here. So I don't know why it's still, I mean, I guess we'll know when we, when we start driving. Um, this energy thing didn't change any values right here. So this was stuck on zero, and then this consumption was kind of uh, in a weird kind of value right here. So the energy saved is gonna be based on uh, regenerative braking. And then of course they changed the current trip, uh, which allowed you to adjust from your odometer or what you're doing for currently. But of course you can reset it by uh, just long pressing and uh, to clear out the mileage left. There's some stuff related with the share icon. So if you press here, you can share uh, different information about your car. So pretty cool stuff. My, here's what I have right here. Um, supercharging access, battery info. Um, this seems a little bit more correct now, especially they had some stuff fixed with the degradation. I don't know what overall health means in terms, it says 46 charge cycles left. I mean, I have 8,900 miles and battery health. And I have, I have, I mean, I mean, I probably have like about 500 charges. That's probably what this battery is rated for. Maybe it's based on how many charge cycles I've done. So I don't know what it is, but it, 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 I think it's maybe another feature they could probably fix on that. Here's some stuff related with energy. This is definitely correct in terms of how much I've charged as uh, the Tesla app reads this correctly. Wasted energy stationary, that would basically include if you're running sentry mode, the air conditioning and everything like that while you are parked. And of course, energy saved while you are driving through uh, regenerative braking. So this stuff was not really too accurate, but they fixed that um, with the latest app updates. They changed some stuff regarding logging. And of course, they added a menu screen or settings menu. You used to have to press the battery icon or hold on to it up here on the main screen to get to it. So they added they added a proper screen for that. So let's change the screen here to go to dark mode because I like dark mode and it's gonna change it right there. So it's much better and more contrasty. And of course, if you have poor eyes, they allow you to change the main screen to be much bigger fonts. So we can do it for notifications as well as the, the speedometer. And here you go. I think that's a little too big. I think they could probably change it maybe to 50% larger, but I think that's a little too big. What I would like to see them change or give the ability is some of the energy consumption, um, you could add and remove icons. If so uh, if you wanna focus on things of interest, I think that'd be really valuable. And I think for battery heating, I think they should just change it to integrate with some stuff with climate control in terms of what is it actually doing to your battery. Are you cooling down the battery? Are you heating it up? Usually you heat up the battery, they maintain consistent performance which is should be around like 94 degrees Celsius, or sorry, 94 degrees Fahrenheit, or 34 degrees Celsius, 37 degrees Celsius for optimal performance. Um, so maybe remove some of these icons. 
Um, they could make some of these fonts a little bit bigger. I think that would be nice. But everything else looks pretty good right here. I'm gonna turn off the large notifications and this stuff right here because I don't need that. And yeah, pretty much it. And the Android app is actually pretty much similar in features. There were some less bugs on some parts, but I will do that testing a little bit later on um, independently and post my results into the description. But yeah, for now, let's go on a drive and see how well the newest features perform. I like this version. Right. I think the turn signal is actually pretty one of the coolest. Yeah, that's what I would get that for. Because the turn signal by default really sucks. Yeah, and you can see it clearly rather than this little button right there. <laughs> so it looks really good. Some energy consumers right there. I think the energy consumption is the coolest. It's totally not necessary, but it gives you a chance to keep Talk out. about what it's doing. All right, so right now on the yellow, it's giving energy to the rear motor. And then it's also, um, we have climate control on as well as we're heating up the battery um, to make sure it performs. Now let's accelerate a little bit quickly and you'll see the front motor. So go back to here and we'll see, we're gonna get some horsepower. There we go. So this is a, this is a dual motor performance car right here. And it uses a front motor for extra pep and horsepower and of course acceleration. Now we're regening, so the rear motor is on, is on yellow. So yellow means we're giving energy back to the battery. So you see right here, we're slowly slowing down. And of course there's some other stuff. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's headlights, it could be the computer system, infotainment system, whatever you want to call it. And then we can see how much horsepower we're giving back to the system. So you'll see we're, yep, this is all regen stuff. And now we're gonna do a kind of a sharp turn coming up in a little bit. And you'll see the G meter right here, kind of just go up. You're still recording the screen? Yeah, that's still recording. We'll have to see that up off the yeah. All right, so here we go. Prepare for kind of a sharp turn right here. Let's see right here. See the red dot going? It's pretty cool. So this is using the built-in accelerometer in the car as it is used to judge how well you drive or different things for FSD, so full self-driving beta, and qualifications on that, insurance purposes, a lot of different diagnostics is very useful in terms of how of what your acceleration and accelerometer looks like and braking. So they, they pull all that stuff called telematics and it's used to rate how good of a driver are and as well as troubleshooting in the car. So it's definitely really Of course, we can see our current status of the car. OD has gone up, our, our odometer. Um, we can see the VIN number. I'm not going to show you because that's not necessary. And uh, let's go back and see. Is the font still there? Oh, the font's still there. I don't have old eyes, so I'm going to turn that off. So we're just on the fly. Oh, one thing I, should, I forgot to tell you is that you can actually change the screens using the autopilot button. So watch here. I can go left to right. Boom, look at that. Oh, look at that. No need to actually have your phone touch your screen between the steering wheel. It's a little dangerous, but here we go. Look at that. Kind of nice. Of course, you get some of the issues regarding car fall distance, but you just set that up when you want to use um, autopilot for fall distance. But yeah, I can just scroll through here. I can do something called scroll nauseum. Woo! Don't you like that? Yeah, but pretty much hands-free. 